Max Gawler, Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cochin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. A Premiership Tiger has made his move from Punt Road all the way to the West Coast Eagles. For West Coast, they believe this is going to be a signature piece of turning their club around, while for the Tigers, it is all aboard draft pick city. They have got plenty of stops at the 2024 AFL draft. What does Liam Baker's move to the Eagles mean for both clubs? And for those of us that play AFL Fantasy, Supercoach, Dream Team, and Keeper, what does it mean for us in 2025 and beyond? Liam Baker, from all reports inside Punt Road, is one of the most beloved players of this premiership era. Not just for his versatility and flexibility and the desire to do whatever it takes, not only for his club positionally, but also for his teammates, But culturally, this guy is a leader and is one of the unheralded reasons this club over the better part of a decade now has turned itself from being at many points in time a laughing stock, now being with multiple premierships over the past 10 years, a club to be admired and respected. And now based off the draft hall they have, feared for what they might be able to do in the future. What does Liam Baker's departure mean for the Tigers? Well. Between this and all of the other moves they're doing this offseason, some that have landed, some that will happen real soon, they are just completely embracing this rebuild. They are valuing the draft as a number one spot and are letting go of some relatively handy trade assets from a player perspective to just completely commit to bottoming out. The pain is going to be unbearable in 2025. I know some Richmond fans are going, yeah, but we had injuries to so many key players. Yes, you did. But the players that are coming out of your club are the guys that played throughout this year. And so whatever net gain you feel you have with players coming back from injury, it feels like that's going to be completely undone with just experienced guys walking out the door, albeit the club and the players are happy to make it happen. So complete rebuild for the club. Baker's been a guy that they positionally have just put in multiple different spots. Um, At times he's played across half back, half forward, even through the midfield. And so what this really does positionally for Richmond, not just from the trade asset, but it just enables more kids to get opportunities to step up. However, Adam Uze had planned to use Liam Baker, whether it be in that Selly's all gap kind of fill Baker wherever you need, or it needed to be a bit more dimensionally locked in. It just means a kid can get a spot. So do we see someone be more locked in off the back line, through the half forward line, through the midfield? Look, I'm not too sure, but all I know is this one thing. Baker was their gap filler, and now they've got somebody else that they can have that opportunity to either lock in away more permanently as one of the kids that are coming from this draft or somebody else that's currently sitting at the club they're just hoping to give opportunities to, such as a Tyler Swansea. So a kid's getting this opportunity. That's what this really means. For West Coast, here's what this brings for this team. One is leadership. They've been knocked from pillar to post over the past couple of years for really lacking in leadership. And while they haven't lacked for experience, they have lacked for leadership and for culture. And that's exactly what Liam Baker is going to bring to this side. With so many of their premiership era greats now gone um, and others on the way out uh, over the next year or two, it's absolutely just leadership stations for the Eagles. That's arguably the number one thing that Liam is going to bring to this side is leadership. What does it mean positionally? Gosh, where does his play? Arguably his versatility of being able to play high half forward, lock down forward, um, rebound and run and carry half back, even through the midfield as a bit of a an in and under expert. Like his versatility Um, Not only is that his strength, arguably that could be his weakness to many in terms of when we get to the fantasy perspective in a moment, but I could probably see him playing more as a centre-half 
player um, and center half forward of the ball, not a center half forward, don't hear me wrong, but playing in that kind of midfield and then pushing through that forward line. I feel like that's where West Coast are going to get the greatest value for him. Absolutely playing through that midfield unit, giving them the opportunity to keep blooding kids through there. They're going to get a really nice early draft pick with that first selection. Harley Reid's a generational talent. They've got some others that they're hoping to give opportunities through there. Elijah Hewitt, if he can get on top of his health concerns, all of a sudden West Coast do feel like they're starting to grow a young midfield. And alongside Yo and Kelly, I feel like Baker sits in that nice gap in between the generations just to bridge the gap a little bit through that midfield, take some heat off some of the younger bodies, but also then go forward and and create a little bit of chaos, add some presence, add some pressure to a a, a tall forward line of Allen and Waterman, who are certainly their core pillars up forward. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. So I think Baker's going to play a little bit of a similar role. Um, Exactly where Minnie McWalter, who has spent a lot of time coaching him at Richmond, given his assistant coach tenure there, I feel like we'll get a really good insight through the preseason. And it's for that reason that he does need to be considered for fantasy footy in 2025. Maybe not as highly relevant as you think, but a high 70s average in AFL fantasy. A couple of tons through there, including a 113 while in super coach. A low 80s average, but he does have some ceiling about him with that 140. And so what I look at is, yes, okay, not a massive average. Let's round it with high 70s, low 80s, depending on the format you play. But between round 1 to 14, he averaged. 90.7 90.7 in AFL Fantasy and an 87.7 in Supercoach. So there's, what, five to 10 points per game of value, depending on the format that you play. Positionally, what allocation to champion data give him? Well, it's going to be interesting to see, but he won't be a pure mid in my eyes. I think there's going to be some uh, dual position allocation to it. So for Classic, it's it's an, a potential watch if he gains a favorable second position that's not just a midfield. And we see West Coast commit to him playing more through the midfield. If these two variables come together for us, then now all of a sudden in Classic, I'm interested. It's not high crazy value by any means, but there's enough fat on the bone to consider him if, as I said, he's locked into that West Coast first choice midfield and he gets a positional allocation other than just midfield. If those two things happen, all right, he at least needs to be a classic consideration, and he needs to be someone that goes in your notebook. By the way, if you want to get your coach's panel preseason notebook or any of the other merch, it's available in the description of this episode. Draft is certainly where he's going to be someone we consider, though. He's going to be a player that we look at with some consideration and cons- consistency, and he'll definitely get picked up. But the variables that I've mentioned that will make him salary cap or classic relevant will largely determine just how early he leaves off draft boards. I think the other factor is if he does have a secondary positional status such as forward, well, what's the positional scarcity looking like? Regardless, he's going to get picked up on draft day, and I think probably around that, if he's a forward, an F3 position, coaches will consider him because it's a, it's a low threshold to scoring. And there's an absolute pathway and a necessity for him to spend some time through that West Coast midfield. How heavy a percentage determines, I guess, really how much protection uh, West Coast desire and to give around these kids and whether or not players such as an Elliot Yo spend less time through the midfield or not. A lot will be made clear through the preseason, but he, at the very, very least in classic, deserves a spot in your preseason watch list notebook. And for draft, he's going to get picked up. 
The question is, is that that F3 spot, which is probably at his peak, or does he slide to an F4, F5? Again, as always, depending on draft depth, how many teams are in that side and how many players you need on the field. But he's going to get picked up on draft day without too much concern for me. But what's your take on Liam Baker? What does this mean for West Coast? And how big could he average for us in fantasy footy next year? If you're watching this episode on YouTube, why don't you comment below and let me know what position and what average do you forecast him having next year? If you're listening to this as an audio podcast, get in touch with us across social media and comment and let us know what you think it's going to be as a season output for Liam Baker. If you're enjoying this series, uh, make sure you give it a five-star rating and review as an audio podcast or a thumb thumbs up like on the video episode. If you want to keep in touch with us across social media, all the details are in the description of this episode, as well as all the links to grab yourself some coaches panel merch and to join our Patreon. Our Patreons right now get a ton of exclusive year round content, including right now, our top 50 keeper ranks that are available exclusively for paid Patreons and Spotify paid subscribers. If you'd like access to that series, all the details for those and everything else, like I said, in the details of this description of the episode. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you're enjoying your AFL trade and free agency period so far. Hope your club has landed some players that you've been hoping for. And we can't wait to be back chatting with you about another player that's moved clubs this offseason.